Hello, grade 12 psychology class. Welcome back to another lecture. We have lesson three, classical conditioning part three. And it would seem that I added a subtitle to this one, classical conditioning and human behavior. So there you go. That's what it's all about. Uh, we're gonna talk about applications, key point one, taste aversion, which is key point two, and then uh, a few other things with human behavior, generalization and discrimination, some examples uh in part three so let's go uh so practical applications so using this principle of classical conditioning a couple of people on your screen a whole long time ago discovered discovered a practical solution to the problem of bedwetting one reason bedwetting occurs is that children do not wake up during the night to body signals that they have a full bladder so these people the marrers developed a device known as the bell and pad. And it's not a nice looking device, but you have to think that it's 1938. Um, so they're doing their best with what they know, which is, um, you know, they, they don't like bedwetting. That's what they know. Uh, it consists of two metallic sheets perforated with small holes and wired to a battery run alarm. Uh, the thin metal sheets were wrapped in insulation or padding and are placed underneath the child's bed sheets. Uh, it looks like this, but under the bed sheets, I do believe. So um, the pad and then under the bed sheets, this is it, I do believe, over the bed sheets. When the child's uh, sleeping child moistens the sheet with the first drops of urine, the circuit closes and causes the alarm to go off. This wakes the child and the child can use the bathroom. So you can see the alarm here, I think. Um, Here's this really comfortable looking bed, this really nice looking blanket. And this is the pattern. I think you'd put a sheet over it. And as soon as it got wet, the alarm would go off and wake up the child. So the alarm is the unconditioned stimulus uh, that produces the unconditioned response of waking up. So it's the natural thing that wakes up the child. And the sensation of the full bladder is a conditioned stimulus. Um, before conditioning, it didn't produce wakefulness, but hopefully the sensation of the full bladder will be paired with the alarm, which is the response is to wake up, is to get up and go to the bathroom. After several pairings, the full bladder and the alarm, the child is able to awaken to the sen sensation of a full bladder without the help of the alarm. It's a little cut off there, I apologize, but without the help of the alarm, it says, without the help of the alarm. Can I move this up on the fly? Uh, let's go. I can. Okay, here. Without the help of the alarm. Okay, uh, let's continue. Uh, we are gonna talk about a snail now. Um, that's right, snails. So, a taste aversion. Suppose you try an appetizer, for instance, you try snails or fancy restaurant. Mm -mm -mm. After dinner, you go to a concert and you become violently ill in the bathroom. You'll probably develop a taste aversion and you may never be able to look at another snail. Um, it is unlikely that the concert hall in which you were sick will become the conditioned stimulus, nor will other stimuli from the restaurant like the wallpaper or the type of china used. And this will be true even if it wasn't the snail that made you sick. Humans have a biological nature to like, once they've ate, eaten something and gotten sick, have an aversion to it. it. It's something that we have evolved with to help us to avoid things that might make us sick. And then number three for a key point, generalization. I should move this back down now. Uh, discrimination in human behavior. There we go. Um, generalization and discrimination are part of complementary processes, as I kind of mentioned in the last lesson, and are part of uh, your everyday life. Um, so we know that not every stop sign is a stop sign, um, and but we know that different car horns mean the same thing. So um, we can discriminate between signs, but we generalize that car horns mean move, you are ignoring the red or the green light because you're on your phone. So we have generalized um, and discriminated a whole bunch of things that we don't even realize. Um, and it helps us navigate our everyday lives. Um, another example would be if a friend or yourself 
has come to associate the sound of a dentist drill with a fearful reaction, so they're scared of the dentist, essentially. Your friend may find that he or she has generalized this uncomfortable feeling to the sound of other non-dental drills, whether that be a handheld drill um, or a drill out on the street. Uh, they may be uncomfortable with any drill at all. But later, you know, after it's been a while and her, she's heard he or she has heard many drills, they may learn to discriminate between the sound of a dentist drill and other drills. So we are constantly learning um, and this is this generalization and discrimination is a type of classical conditioning, which is a type of learning. That's this entire unit. So we are constantly learning um, to like how to react in different situations and what different signals uh, mean or some signals mean the same thing. Uh, we have important terms for you as always, and then there's a case study involving little Albert, and I'm sure you will be absolutely shocked by how they treated little Albert. Uh, I was as well, and if you want to talk about it, let me know. Talk about it with your classmates, send me an email, uh, flag me down in class. But thank you so much for watching, everyone, uh, and I'll see you back for lesson four.